All right, the start of the trigonometry unit. Um, we're going to start with stuff that you know. If you remember t the trigonometry unit in uh, grade 11, definitely some things that you learned in there that we're going to use. Um, hopefully you still remember those exact values that you've memorized. But we're going to take everything sort of to the next level. So let's go with what you should remember. Um, first of all, let's talk about an angle in standard position. An angle in standard position is an angle that starts with a vertex at the origin. Its initial arm is always the x-axis and we draw the angle counterclockwise. So this is an angle in standard position. Okay? I mean, we could have that terminal arm in any of these quadrants. It could be anything like that, but basically we're going counterclockwise. This is a positive angle. Okay, a positive angle will be measured counterclockwise. On the other hand, a negative angle would again start at the x-axis but go backwards. So this is going to be a negative angle. Okay, that's nothing new. The negative is a little bit new, but you, we looked at anything from 0 to 360 degrees last year. So if you picture 0 degrees being here on the x-axis all the way around to 360, we, we dealt with measures like that. We're going to go a little further now. We're going to talk about something called coterminal angles. Coterminal means ending in the same place. Okay, so if you look at these three angles, 30, 390, and 750, they are coterminal. Why? Well, 30 degrees would be about here. Okay, so that's, that's our 30 degree angle. Now if you go 390 degrees, think about that for a second. If you go all the way around, this is 360, and if you keep going 30 more degrees, you end up at 390 degrees. And you can see that they have the same terminal arm. They end in the same place. Those angles will give you the same trig ratios. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, 750, that's just another time around the circle. So 750, you would go once around, twice around, and then 30 degrees. Okay, I'm not going to draw that because it'll just get a little bit messy. So those are coterminal angles. Okay, now negative angles can also be coterminal. So let's try this. Here's 40 degrees, approximately. By the way, if you have to do that on a test and you write 40 degrees like this or 40 degrees like that, you're probably not going to get the mark. It should be in the vicinity of halfway. Okay, it should be approximately halfway. So you kind of have an approximation where it would be. Now negative 320. Okay, so think about that for a second. If you went backwards all the way around, how far is that? Well, that's negative 360 degrees. Okay, so if we go backwards 360, take away 40, this is going to be negative 320 degrees. And then 680 would be all the way around once backwards and then almost around the second time. That's negative 680 degrees. Okay, so coterminal angles. Let's try a sample question. Determine the measures of all angles in standard position between negative 800 and 800 that are coterminal with an angle of 85 degrees. Okay, so here's 85 degrees. So let's list these. So here's part A. So our angles will be 85 is 1. What is it going to be if we go 360 plus 180? That's going to be 445 degrees. That one is between negative 880 and positive, sorry, negative 800 and positive 800. Let's try again. Let's go 445 plus 360. So we'll go around one more time. That's going to give us 805 degrees. Is that between negative 800 and 800? It is not. So we're not going to count that one. Okay. So let's go backwards now. So if we take 85 and subtract 360 from it, what does that give us? That gives you negative 275 degrees. So negative 275 would be like that. Okay, let's try taking away 360 again. See where that takes us. 
this is going to be negative 635. And you can see that one's still okay. If we take away 360 again, it's going to be bigger than negative 800. So those are our coterminal angles between negative 800 and 800. Part B says write the expression for all angles. Okay, there is no restriction on the domain here. So in other words, we want to list all the angles. So no matter how many times we go around, we go around once, twice, three, four, five, infinite number of times. We don't want to obviously list all those. In other when we want to come up with a short way of doing this. And here it is. We're going to say 85 degrees plus 360 times k, where k is an integer. Okay, and so let's just think about what is an integer. An integer is numbers like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, etc. So for example, if you said k is 1 and you put it in there, you would go 85 plus 360. If you said k is 2, you would put k in there and you would end up with 720 here. Okay, if you said k is negative 1, then this is negative 360, and you would go 85, take away 360. This gives us every possible way of writing a coterminal angle. Okay? All right, this is also a little bit of a review. Suppose there's a terminal point, and it's in quadrant 1, and it lies one unit, in any quadrant, sorry, and it lies one unit from the origin. All right, if you remember this, we called this the unit circle. So this is one unit, and this is some point x, y. And this would be the same for no matter where this is on the unit circle. Okay, if you turn this into a right triangle, we can use our trig ratios. Do you remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse? So in this case, if you think about the angle, opposite would be whatever the y value is. Okay, and then the hypotenuse would be 1. So we get y over 1, which is just y. If you think about cosine, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. In this case, adjacent is the x value. And so if you get x over 1, you end up with just x. And tan is opposite over adjacent, so that's y over x. Okay, those are the trig ratios. Let's try a question. Oh, before we try a question, I have something new for you. The reciprocal. These are three more ratios. Okay, and um, they're on your formula sheet. You don't have to memorize them, but you will. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Secant is the reciprocal of cos. Cotan is the reciprocal of tan. Okay, so let's try a question. Um, this you have memorized. If you don't have it memorized, you need to because the next two units, we're going to use those every single lesson. Okay, so determine the exact values of the six trig ratios for 45 degrees. So what we're looking for here is sine of 45, cos of 45, tan of 45, and then the reciprocal identities, cosecant, secant, and cotan. And we're supposed to know those. Those are ones that we've memorized. What is sine of 45 degrees? Well, here it is right here. Sine is root 2 over 2. By the way, that could also be 1 over root 2. Those are the same things. One is rationalized, one's not. Cosine is also root 2 over 2, and tan is 1. Okay, those you should have memorized from last year. Now, what about the reciprocal? Well, the reciprocal of secant, uh, sorry, cosecant, is the reciprocal of sine. So if we flip sine upside down, you get 2 over root 2. Again, if you rationalize the denominator, you're going to multiply by root 2 over root 2, and you just get root 2. Okay? And the reciprocal of 1 is 1. Now, just a quick comment about, you know, I've got two different answers here. Both are okay. The good news is you do not, I repeat, you do not need to rationalize the denominator. Either one is okay. 
All right. Let's try this one. Determine the exact trig ratios for 120. So 120 is about here. All right, and let's write them all out. Sine 120, cos 120, tan 120, cosecant 120, secant 120, and cotan 120. Now, very important comment here. 120 is more than 0 to 90 degrees. Whenever you think that, I want you to think about what we call the reference angle. Do you remember this from last year? The reference angle is what is the angle that is to the closest x-axis? In other words, what is this angle? This is the reference angle. It should be pretty obvious that that's 60 degrees. So when you're doing these, you should be thinking, what are my values for 60? Not 120. You don't have to memorize other quadrants. You should only memorize quadrant 1. Okay? So what is sine of 60? Sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. What is cosine of 60? It's 1 over 2. And what is tan of, one, of 60? It's root 3. Okay? Now the only thing, little thing that you need to remember is... Yes, we can think of quadrant 1, but you have to think about what sign this is. In quadrant 2, only sign is positive. So that means cosine is negative and tan is negative. Okay, and now doing the reciprocal. The reciprocal for sine is going to be 2 over root 3. The reciprocal for secant will be negative 2. And the reciprocal here is going to be negative 1 over root 3. All right. Hopefully that's a little bit of a review from last year. A few new ratios, but uh, finding those should be a bit of a review. Okay. I'm going to stop there, end the lesson here, and I'm going to uh, start a new lesson on a new video just so that the, the lesson isn't too long. Okay.